Hello and welcome back to another video here at the LA Auto Show. This is one I've been trying to get with for a long time and it's going to be our first look at the E-Transit. This is Ford's electric van. Uh, I'm all into van life. Vans are perfect for commercial use, for personal use, for adventuring. Should we talk a little bit about electric van life, both from a commercial space and a personally owned space? You guys know vans are everywhere and the Transit has to be the most or one of the most popular vans out there. And for good reason, I'm a huge Ford Transit van. One, because I think it's actually the best handling van in our comparison testing. I know it's a very silly thing that most people don't care about, but now it's gone electric and initially for fleet use. So if you are a business owner that wants to electrify your fleet, this is something you could be considering. The biggest thing when it comes to fleets is value for money, so price. So this thing's 44.9 before all of the incentives you can get. I mean, there's, I don't know, a whole bunch of tax stuff, but also federal tax credits. And all together, uh, yeah, 44.9 is pretty good, especially considering it has more standard equipment than the combustion-based transit, and it's only like $1,500 more, maybe less, something like that. The regular transit starts at 43, so it's like, almost the same price, but then has tons of tax credits and more standard equipment. So you're kind of already starting off on the right foot new here. Let me show you how you charge it. We'll get into this stuff a little bit. So a 67-ish kilowatt hour battery usable can be charged on AC up to 48 amps. What's that, about 11 and a bit kilowatts. And then DC charging up to 115 kilowatt peak, which is awesome. Of course, I actually love the location of this charging port right up front. You just nose this sucker into your parking lot lock it in and you're good to go. I can't wait till we see strings of level two chargers for overnight charging at delivery hubs and local places who use vans, charging these things up, it's awesome. In terms of range, well, when you start getting into bigger and bigger and bigger vehicles, of course your efficiency drops, but also the spread of efficiency gets bigger. And one of the nice things about the e-transit is it's not just like one configuration. Now you can't get an all wheel drive one, it is rear driven but you can get different lengths. So I, this is a high roof, I think long wheelbase. I think this is about as big as you can get. So this one's probably around 108 miles, uh, projected EPA Ranger. So all of these figures, again, aren't totally verified. So it's all, you know, plus or minus a little bit. I think Ford's doing what they did with Mach-E, which is sort of under promise and over deliver later. So let's not get too excited, but I think at least based off of Ford's history in the past, I think they'll hit and exceed all of the numbers they've mentioned so far. We've seen it time and time again, actually. So this one's the big one, but you can get three different, no, two different roof heights and three different chassis length heights, right, Jordan? I think three that's heights. true. Three heights, three heights and three lengths. So you can hodgepodge however you want. Essentially, that will also affect your payload because that's important. Before we get into that, let me show you over here. This one's equipped with the power door. I don't actually know if it's standard or not, but it is really nice just to pull that and have it open. You guys know I actually use a van for overlanding. I have one of those Sprinter 4x4 conversions and it would be so neat to convert one of these things. I hope once they've kind of satisfied the incredible demand from the you know, sort of fleet space that maybe people like you and I could just buy one. Maybe we'll see, I don't know. Let's go inside the van, take a look at this. Tons of room in here, it's insane. So one of the nice things about the E-Transit is it is built on the Transit chassis, which means all of the mounting points, the hard mounts, this one has the walls installed. You can get so many different configurations. So if you wanna upfit your van, uh, you don't need to go and have it all retemplated. Everything that fits in the back of a normal Transit that's designed for it works here, which just is so critical and key. Up front, you can see the cab here. You also lose the overhead uh, roof shelf here, which means you have just enormous amounts of headroom. Look at the cabin up here too. You have the uh, electric shifter that we know from Maki -E with L mode for increased regen. This particular one has adaptive cruise control. It's an option on this vehicle. There's also a sync system. So all together, there's just so much technology in here for again, a work vehicle, a vehicle that's designed to be used in a fleet scenario, it's pretty much like so cool. So let's talk uh, payload. Forgive me for looking at my notes here for a second, but it's super important. All of the things that you can put pack here pretty much de depends. So GVWR is dependent on spec of the vehicle, of course. So I don't know why I thought there was power rear doors. That was just weird. It doesn't have that, of course. Um, ooh, nice E-Transit badge. Look at this. You like that, Jordan? I love that. That looks great. 
Oh, I'm so pumped for this thing. By the way, before I give you the numbers on uh, payload, you also get Ford Pro Power. And now it's not as crazy as like F-150 Lightning that has like a million kilowatts of output, but you can get, I don't know what this one's optioned for, a couple, yeah, 2.4 kilowatt output. So that must be these plugs back here. That is such a great system to have Pro Power because you can charge devices. You could put, in theory, like eight electric dirt bikes back here and charge them all up on a long journey. <laughs> Although I think this is gonna be better suited for like inner city work and stuff like that because 108 miles EPA, I don't know, we'll see. But take a look at that, there's just tons of room. So payload goes from 3,240 pounds on the, that's like this one with the tallest roof, longest wheelbase, I imagine. And then if you go for low roof, short wheelbase, so the least amount of material weight to build it, it's 3,800 pounds. Uh, by the way, I should mention the rear motor uh, is targeted about 200 kilowatts, 198 they say. So 266 horsepower, that's a lot of power. If you guys have never driven an unloaded van before, or especially an unloaded rear wheel drive transit van, they actually like shred, they're really fun. So I can't wait to do a track comparison of this. We've actually had, uh, maybe on this channel, maybe on one of our others, a transit electric on track. And that was a conversion that was done. And so I think we'll have to put this one up against the Lightning E-Motors transit that we tested to see which electric transit can get your packages from A to B as quickly as possible. Let us know if you'd like to see that. Anyway, let's go back around to the front just to get a sheer size of this thing and one last little profile view. I am, again, so excited for these things. What do you guys think? I think it's gonna be totally revolutionary to the low you know, distance needed for local deliveries altogether. Mm, by the way, it's made in Kansas City. I'm just going through to see what else I should tell you. I got everything else, how about that? Pretty amazing, can't wait to see these on the road. Can't wait to run them through our testing program. And honestly, I just hope People do really cool things with them. And yeah, the range is honestly more than enough for its use case. Love it, really do.